Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild with episode 9 of the Beginner's Guide and today we are going to be doing a special mission episode. And our first mission here on Rancho Del Arroyo says that we need to collect 6 different items and familiarize ourselves with the Hacienda. So, I think we just have to look around here and collect items. I don't exactly know what we're supposed to collect, but I suppose we will just search around until we find it and that is one of them. At least we managed to convince her that one was enough. And there's probably going to be one, yeah, right here. Much since my bisabuelo, uh, that's my great grandfather, since he died. I went ahead and turned the dialogue up a little bit because I felt like it was a bit quiet. So it should be a little bit easier to hear now. I think something's got to be over here. And yeah, we got this book. The Underdogs by Mariano Azuela. It's about the revolution. My bisabuelo Javier used to complain that Azuela had gone in it all wrong. <laughs> and I should know I was there. <laughs> but he must have read the cover to cover at 20 times. And it looks like we got a fridge with a bunch of uh, drawings and magnets and stuff on it. I'm guessing this has to be one of their kids, probably. Oh, oh, I told her to take those down. Uh, this is what I did when the other boys were out playing soccer. <laughs> it's the... Hey, uh, I don't mean to stress you out or anything, but this isn't quite what I meant by scouting the place out. Managed to make a career out of it, at least. There's not a lot of places left to go, so I think this has to be one of them, and it actually looks like there might be two items to grab. That was my great-grandfather Javier's. I swear that man used to take the damn thing into the bathroom with him. He was a vaquero through and through. Ah, that's a soldadera's hat. A woman revolutionary. My sister borrowed it for the centenary celebrations in Mexico City a few years ago. Let no one tell you Mexican women are afraid to do the dirty work. Well, you're, um, you're thorough. I'll give you that. And now for the final part of the first mission, we have made our way to the nearest lookout tower that we will now unlock, and this will Looks complete scary. this mission. Except a lot of the problem with ranches like this one is what you can't see. We've sucked up so much of the groundwater for cattle that areas that used to be wetlands are turning arid year-round. The grasslands are mostly buffalo grass. It's an introduced species that smothers native plants. It likes to catch fire, too. I once saw a saguaro, you know, one of those classic cactus plants, surrounded by buffalo grass, burst into flames. It was one of the kicks in the rear I needed to finally sell off the last of our cattle. Anyway, take the time to explore the ranch in your downtime, too. If even half of what I heard growing up is true, <laughs> there is plenty waiting out there. So, while I'm stuck waiting for someone, they said less than a minute, but out here that means at least five, or probably more like 20. Anyway, you're here to evaluate the facilities, but there are a few things I need you to take care of first. I'll make it worth your while, of course. First up, the cattle may be gone, but there's still some fencing left. There should be a pair of fencing pliers on the countertop in the Hacienda's kitchen. So that first mission was simple enough. For the second one, we just have to go into the kitchen of the Hacienda and grab the uh, fencing pliers, which that should not be difficult at all. In fact, the kitchen's just right here. And there is the pliers. Let's go ahead and grab these. We got like, I think, 250 XP and... Like 2,500 cash for that first mission, so not too bad for what it was. That's them. I'll mark the spot on your hunter raid. And it shows that we just need to go down south of the lodge a little bit. Uh, wow, we can actually go straight through there. That's kind of nice. I didn't even realize that there was these doors that allow you to go into the middle. That's kind of cool. I like that a lot. But, let's just run over here. It does not look like it's very far at all. In fact, I think I know exactly where we're going. There is a fence over here that I always pass when I'm heading over here to Pheasant Hunt. And it is right there. So it looks like we're going to be working on that. I'm guessing that we're just clipping away some of the fallen fencing. It's section by section. Oh, actually we're taking down the entire thing. Ay, why 
Watch yourself there. The nearest hospital would laugh you out of the building if you told them you needed a tetanus shot for a barbed wire cut just because you weren't wearing gloves. And now the posts. You can pile them up in a heap and I'll have someone collect them later. Alright, well we got all the fencing, now it's just down to these stakes. Which that uh, should not take too long, just kind of run through and spam E. Whew. I'm getting sweaty just watching you. Well, that takes care of that. I actually wanted to check this one off the list myself, but I had some matters to attend to in town. It's a big moment for the ranch, tearing down the last of the fencing. The Soto family has raised cattle on this land since Mexico's independence. My mom... Ah, now you're making me sentimental. Look, how about a change of pace, huh? I'm stuck here, waiting, and you're probably itching to put that trigger finger to good use, so let's have some fun. Things out here aren't all business, you know? <laughs> and we got a level up from that, so that's pretty nice. A thousand dollar cash reward. Before, no? Well, I'm no expert, but I picked up a couple of pointers from my friends over the border when we introduced these guys, so... I can show you the ropes. Head over to the region marked on your hunter mate and we'll get started. Pheasant... Uh, pheasants... Uh, are shy, so look around for any evidence of them in vegetation cover. Somewhere around here is a good place to start looking. So, the trick to pheasant hunting is maybe a little counterintuitive. You have to make them flee, or flush them out. They're lousy flyers. But we can use that to our advantage. We've just got to get them to take off first. You know the rest. The right ammo for the job, of course. Then it's pan comido, a piece of cake. And no one likes a cheater, so no shooting them on the ground. Got it? Well, that's easy enough. We just got to shoot a few pheasants out of the air as they're supposed to be shot. And we, real quickly, will put this perk point in. Uh, what do we need to get now? There's a lot of ones that'll be really useful. Uh, we definitely want to work up towards like lightning hands, quick draw, stuff like that. Uh, we definitely need to work up towards recoil management as well. Um, this is going to be pretty good. So we'll fast shouldering. There's a lot of these that are going to be really, really good. Or we could just go with another steady hands or breath control or uh, muscle memory. I don't know. I'm not sure what we should do. I think... I think we'll go with probably steady hands this time. Because that's going to keep our shots a lot more uh, steady. The scope's not going to sway as much, which will be very nice. So I'm going to reset the time to uh, pheasant feed time, and then we will go down and get a few. So I think our plan is going to be to go over to this field right around here and try to get some pheasants there. This has been a fantastic pheasant spot for me on my main account, so... I think that's the first place we'll look. If we can't find any there, then we will try to work our way down here. Uh, because there's some fields kind of like right in this area that have quite a few pheasants as well. So if we can't get any here, we'll head down there. Hopefully that will yield a couple pheasants. I don't even know how many we need to shoot. It looks like... One. Just one. That's it. Well, that'll be easy. Finally, we have a call from a pheasant. So... Now we just got to figure out where it is and flush it out. It's got to be in this little field that's down here, so that should at least make it easy to find it. And there we go. I actually see it sprinting off right there. So that is the female. There's a bunch of pheasants right there. It's actually two roosters as well, but uh, we're sadly not going to be able to get any of those because they've already flown off quite a ways away. But there's a bunch of them right here close to us, so... Let's just try to take out one of these. Hopefully, a rooster if we can get it. And I think we finally got one. There's a rooster. And we got a total of three, I think. We missed a couple shots at the beginning because I was trying to spot and then I forgot that I don't have a uh, sight spotting yet. Which, uh, that definitely would be why I couldn't spot them, but... Let's go ahead and pick this little dude up. This should complete the mission. I'm not a bad teacher, no? 1640. Pretty really good pupil. My ambition is to make this the place to hunt pheasant in northern Mexico. If we can keep them this size, that shouldn't be a problem. Just gotta get the gringo tourists on board. 
they're a big money spinner, sure. But if that's what it takes to keep this place up and running, so be it. It's all for a good cause. Speaking of gringos, my cousin told me that she'd spotted some intruders with a U.S. license plate going hog wild, shooting animals from, get this, from a hunting stand mounted to a pickup truck. My insurance doesn't cover them, and I doubt the hunting they're doing is particularly ethical. So can you keep a lookout? Gracias. All right, well, I know exactly where we're supposed to go now because I've been to that lodging a million times. The old cattle pasture was. Even compared to the rest of the ranch, I mean. The more cattle you cram into a small area, the less ground cover there is. Water just runs off the land instead of making it into the vegetation. My parents' generation dug wells and pumped out several times more water than rain in a year. When I told them my plans for this place, they weren't happy. Said I was selling out my inheritance. <laughs> we haven't spoken much since. Of course, there are plenty of rancheros out here who graze their cattle responsibly. I just want to go in a different direction. I've tried explaining what they gain from it. <laughs> they just wish me luck. But I've heard what they say behind my back. Chavita fresita. It's like, uh... They're basically calling me a, a snob. <sighs> they went to college in Mexico City, same as me. I just stayed a while after I graduated. Worked overseeing protected natural areas for Conant. But back to business. Luckily for us, there's an easy solution to the groundwater problem. It just requires some more muscle on your part. <laughs> I need you to set up a few gabions. They're wire mesh baskets you fill with rocks and place along the banks of the arroyo to accumulate silt, which holds the water like a sponge so it can trickle back into the ground. And the winter rains aren't as predictable as they used to be. You know, with climate change doing a number on us. So, the sooner, the better. All right, I think the dialogue's finally done, so... It looks like we're not quite going to the truck like I thought we were, because I know where the truck is, I've seen it when I go down to this lodge, but... Looks like we have to go clear up here, but first I'm going to go ahead and unlock this outpost since we're already in the area. Because it's a pretty good outpost to go to for pheasants and rabbits, and as you guys can see, there's a lot of pheasants around here already. And it looks like these pheasants are actually going to be heading towards us, so on our way to that outpost, we might as well blast a couple of these. We can get both of those roosters down, and we definitely did. So let's go ahead and pick these little guys up 1780 that's a good pheasant actually pretty happy with that and then this is the other one which just scores 1460 not too bad but not quite a gold and honestly the pheasants give a decent amount of cash and xp we got 227 xp from that pheasant and all of the roosters give around a thousand cash give or take a couple hundred they're really good and Depending on how many of them you can kill in a short amount of time, they could be a good way to make money. We are finally at the outpost. Let's go ahead and unlock this real quick. That'll give us a little bit of XP also. So pretty much everything that we do here is going to be working towards getting those levels. And we've already got one level from doing this. Hopefully we'll get another one by the time we're done with this video. So we finally found the cages. And I'm not going to commentate over it just because uh, I'm assuming there's going to be some dialogue coming up, but it's right over here for those of you that are doing these missions. Let's uh, see what it says real quickly. There should be a pile of rocks there. Line up the gabions first, then fill them. Okay, so... What do we do here? Alright, we just put the cages down. They were conspicuous enough, no? No? Well, the important thing is that they work. Cram as many as you can into each of them. That'll set us up nicely for winter. Okay, what do we do now? Ah, yeah, that makes sense, actually. It's gonna take some time to see the effect of all this, but it's good work you're doing. Believe me, I'm grateful for the extra set of hands. So I'm not actually sure what this was for. for you are free to go off on your own. Most of our outposts are former stockmen's residences. Gives them a bit of rustic charm, you know. 
Back in the old days, entire families worked the land here. Men, women, and children. We still had a couple of people on staff when I was born. But then beef prices tanked and my parents couldn't afford the expense anymore. Us kids had to pick up the slack. Anyway, there's a stockman's residence kind of in the middle of nowhere, even by the standards of this place, that had fallen into disuse. We've given it a paint job and replaced some of the furniture. Now all that's needed to officially establish it as an outpost is a notice board. Head over and set it up. Okay, so it seems like maybe this is an outpost that you unlock through missions? I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what this is. If so, that's kind of cool. It puts an outpost a little bit closer to this lake, which is a pretty good whitetail lake. So if that's the case. That's kind of cool. And sure enough, it looks like this will be a usable outpost. So that's pretty awesome. I didn't actually think that there was an outpost here, but I guess it was part of the missions. I guess so. At least that's what it's looking like. Grab that shovel too. What shovel? Oh, over here. Okay. So we will, you know, let's grab this first. Just so we have the outpost. And then we will get the notice board set up. Quick 100 XP from doing that. And let's get this set up. The rocks first, just over there where the path begins. All right, so we got to clear these rocks. It looks like just another quick hit of E. Oh, actually. What's that? Uh, Gene, is that some sort of save for a logbook? L let me see. Is this how we get the shotgun? You know, this might be how we get the uh, Vaquero or whatever the special variant. Is it the Soledad? I think it's the Soledad. Let's see. The brass lock and handle, a keyhole. This is not new. It could be early 20th century. I feel like I recognize it from somewhere. Interesting. There used to be a log box like this in the Casa Grande's master bedroom. My mom wouldn't like you snooping around, but this feels important. Can you head back over there and see if you can find the key? All right. If you're up for it, of course. <laughs> this isn't part of your job description. Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Finish up here first. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I didn't even know that I had anything left there. <laughs> well, back we go to the other lodge. You know, I got so interested in that lockbox, I completely forgot that we're supposed to be putting up a uh, notice board or whatever it is. Looks good. There we go. You feel free to use this outpost yourself now. If you're in the neighborhood, I'd appreciate it if you could swing by the Casa Grande. I guess my curiosity's got the better of me. All right, let's see what that box has in it. I'm guessing it's going to be that shotgun. That's the only thing I can think of. It's got to be the uh, 16 gauge that's locked behind the quests. I'm hoping it is at least. The master bedroom's upstairs. He always did appreciate his privacy, my great grandfather. That room and the study were like his own personal oasis. Right. Let me think, some uh, plausible deniability would be good for when my mom finally shows up, so let's not just start rifling through things. The logbox I remember was sitting on a shelf next to a wardrobe. A shelf. Next to a wardrobe. Ah, oh, there it is. It looks well used. Let's try it. Oh. <laughs> a disassembled shotgun. Pump action looks like. Also, early 20th century. Are those flecks of blood on the stock? It would make sense if it belonged to Don Javier. He did sleep in here for most of his life, but I don't recognize it. Look, uh, I don't know how things are done where you're from, but I'd rather not get the police involved with this. Whatever happened clearly happened a long time ago, and... They've got more to worry about out here in the borderlands. Plus, my family has a somewhat complicated history with them. So, let's try to solve this ourselves. Let me think. I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but maybe we should check it for clues. 
Man, that is so cool looking. R.S. Bosque Alto, Agosto de 1916. R.S. Bosque Alto, August 1916. Bosque Alto is a site to the east of here, the woods up in the hills, but the initials. R.S. 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 I'm stumped. How about you leave the gun here for now, and I'll have someone from the lab we usually work with for animal samples check the blood. I really doubt there's any intact DNA left, if it's as old as that engraving suggests, but it doesn't hurt to check. I'll keep you up to date. I'm not aware of any buildings up around Bosque Alto, or at least not any intact ones. Good thing I know someone whose entire job involves tracking things down. And this time, you don't need to worry about anything running off on you. I'll mark the rough location on your hunter mate, and you can put those transferable skills to the test. <sighs> Chances are we won't find anything, but I won't rest easy until we've at least checked. Alright, well, on that note, I think we will go ahead and call the episode here, but we got quite a bit of progress on these missions. I would continue, but I don't want this video to be too long, but I think in the next video of the uh, Beginner's Guide, we'll go ahead and finish up these missions here on Rancho Del Arroyo, provided that we're already halfway through. I'm not sure, to be honest, we might not even be halfway but I'll try to get them done in the next episode, but this has been interesting. I'm happy that we have at least got a little bit of a background of this uh, shotgun that's locked behind the missions. I think that's really cool, and those engravings are really awesome looking. I think it's the little details that, like this that I'd love to see more of in the missions. It's really cool to do stuff like this, like being able to find some of the guns that you get to use like this. I think that's really, really cool. And I'm assuming the next time that we do some of these missions, we'll actually get to unlock that shotgun and use it, which will be really awesome. But thank you guys for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and ring that notification bell so that you guys will never miss a video. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below on what you guys want us to do in future episodes of the Beginner Series, or if you guys want me to do some more missions on other maps. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.